in 2010. A man and his crew started a podcast on the internet, but they were distracted by real life for a challenge they couldn't commit to. This crew promptly escaped from real life to the internet. Today, still wanted by real life, they survive as podcasters of fortune. If you are bored, if nothing else can excite you, and if you can find them, maybe you can listen to Attack of the Awesome. Hey all you hip cats out there, this is Attack of the Awesome After Dark. I'm your host Scooter Mike, and along with me are some cool cats out there. For example, we got Gomer. Hello peoples, I need a cigarette. <laughs> and we got the <laughs> Pugsley. Hello. Uh, Zeros and Hacka. Good evening. And uh, we got two special guests of awesomes. Uh, per because se. we love that much. Yeah, we love you guys as much. This episode is special. We got two guests of awesome. Uh, first this episode is old enough to drink. Yes. Episode 21. Yes. Yep. No. yep, 21. Yep. Get your beer out and let's start drinking. Uh, first guest of awesome I'd like to say is... Uh, how do I describe her? How do you describe our guest of awesome? A little ball of Whenever energy. Whenever it hurts, she'll be there. She's a kitty. Yeah, well, here it is. It's Kitty Marie. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Yay. Yay. It's so cute. And she's here. Yes. And if you met her at Bagfest, you know she's a little ball of energy. <laughs> Yep. Yeah. And I am. I just weed over her. Wow. And the second and most important guest of awesome is uh, Jew Wario, aka J Dub. Hey everybody, Yay. how's it going? Yo! Oh, woo. Yeah. yeah! Let's get this party started <laughs> with our uh, first segment of the podcast. It's called Around the Web. We talk about what we've seen on the web, whether it's a video, a picture, anything around the web. So, who would like to start it off? I'll go ahead and start first. Um, two things. One, I actually have a new trailer up for my main review series, which should be going into production within a couple of weeks. It's been really busy lately. And, and another thing, another small thing I have just like right before we start recording. It's a picture somebody posted on Facebook that says simply, to the, to the woman with six screaming, bleh, take two, to the woman with six screaming kids in Walmart, if you are wondering how those condoms got in your cart, you're welcome. <laughs> uh. And I could totally see a friend of mine actually doing that. I would probably do that if Dollar Tree sold condoms. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> wow. Uh, I found these really cool pictures of um, this uh, guy who, I think he's a professional photographer, but they take these awesome pictures of his two kids, and they're amazing. You should go with them. Why does those two kids? Because let's see, he only has two dollars. Uh, actually, I got a like, few things. Um, about a week ago, when we were supposed to record, I noticed uh, on where I on my side of expertise, uh, I found a bunch of Im what they call impressive acts of nerdery. So, uh, the first one being that someone mashed up the Avengers trailer and some of the cartoon All Stars to the rescue. Oh yeah! Oh lordy! Yep, <laughs> that that was really good. Second, uh, <clears throat> someone is apparently. Put every every single person in Middle Earth into one giant ch family tree, which for huh. some reason last time I checked, blank wasn't working. Uh. Uh, so speaking of a fan project, someone is making their MFA graduation project a web series about Doctor What, the universe other time lord. Quote: <laughs> Unlike the Doctor, he's been stranded on Earth for quite some time, and he's horrible in a much much less fun kind of way. And in video game news, Super Mario, yeah, Super Mario Crossover 2 
is that is out right now. Go play it. And finally, <laughs> someone did a someone did a nine minute cover of Green Day's Jesus of Suburbia, all about the first episode of My Little Pony Friendship is Magic. That is really disturbing to me, but also kind of that awesome. That is that's huh. dedication. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Major. Uh. Cool. Uh, I suppose I could go. Uh, I've been scrolling the internet, and uh, I've discovered a DeviantArt profile, because uh, Rosenhacker promoted his uh, title card artist in the past, so I figure, what the hell, I'll promote somebody on DeviantArt. Uh, this guy is called Sharp Writer on DeviantArt. He has drawn presidents being badass. Like, for example, we have uh, George Washington kicking some zombie ass. Uh, let's see. Tom, uh, Thomas Jefferson versus a gorilla. Bitch slapping a gorilla. <laughs> First, Thomas Jefferson bitch slapping a gorilla is just awesome. Uh, there's, a picture, awesome. there's a picture of Teddy <laughs> Roosevelt versus Bigfoot. Oh, hell yeah. Uh, there was another one with Abraham Lincoln on top of a bear riding it. <laughs> oh, I thought it was going to be hunting I know cycle shit. And, uh, let's see. While we're... S- mm-hmm. Nobody knows. Okay, there. While we're speaking, speaking of DeviantArt, while we're speaking of DeviantArt, I have my first banner ever. Yay. This Her. one is done by... This one Wait. This was done by Alicia, who's one of my best friends in real life. And I was just going to say, uh, the probably the, the last most recent one that he did was JFK on the moon <laughs> fi- fighting aliens on top of a robot unicorn. <laughs> That's just amazing. That's the coolest <laughs> thing I've ever Also, heard. it's certain robot unicorn attack reference here. <laughs> that is the coolest thing I've ever heard in my entire life. Oh, yes. Actually, I have it as my background on my computer right now. <laughs> I'm such a such a badass. Uh, yeah, that's what I've seen around the web. Oh, my God. Well, Jeez, actually, I, uh, I, I just got a... Uh, I am a fan of a uh, Japanese band <clears throat> called Vampilia. And it's a, uh, there's a lot of people in Vampilia. Well, when I started to get into it, I found out that they were following me on Twitter. And then I found out that the lead singer started following me on Twitter. So I went to his website, and I discovered a song that he's got up there. Uh, you don't have to listen to it right now because it's, it's a long song, and it's not for everybody. But it's, um, it's different enough that it's interesting to me. It starts off uh, very... Oh, I really like that Benjamin Franklin one. Um, it, it starts off... <laughs> oh, my God, that's uh, very, amazing. Very, very melodic, and then it starts to become a bit more avant-garde and starts to have discordant notes in it, but it fits together so well, and I really just am wanting to share as much as I can with uh, with people. It's it's really good music um, if you're into that type of music. Uh, it, it's definitely not for everybody, but uh, it's, you know, it's worth a l- listen and to see if, if this is up your alley or not. Um, but it's, uh, it's pretty good, and that's one of the things I found uh, uh, also uh, a picture of... Um, uh, Chuck Norris and said Chuck Norris was born, what well, something like May twenty sixth, nineteen forty five, and Germany, Germany, uh, you know, surrendered in May twenty seventh, nineteen forty five. Yeah, Coincidence? I think here. not. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen that one. That really I saw good. that picture. It's like, uh huh. Nah, that's a fun one. But that's what I found. I looked through this. I just noticed all the like Easter eggs, like the. Gags from Minecraft or the Neon Cat. Yeah, and the uh, <laughs> if you look at the JFK one, you can see uh, a reference to Portal. 
so portal. How I wish I could finish that new. But you give me more to stick my hands. But uh oh, it's that's just amazing. amazing. It is. That's it's it's freaking amazing. It is. You can actually my buy My best it. friend is obsessed. <laughs> So that's the Around the Web segment. And we go to the next segment of uh, Attack of the News, where we talk about the news in respective fields of movies, music, video games, and news on the blog of toplessrobot.com. So who wants Basically to... general nerd stuff. Yeah, just nerdy stuff. So... I found something awesome. Such, such as... Um, what's this? Uh, Chris Cornell sends a, sends a man boy at a Seattle airport. And he's the lead singer from Sound Garden, if you don't know who he is. Uh, uh, he overheard two men. He overheard two men at a heated discussion. And one of them called the other guy uh, queer because he made a pro bomb on it. And then he walks up and it's all like... I don't know what it's like they censored it, but it's like, you're, you didn't deliberately, you deliberately called him a queer to make it feel uncomfortable in front of a lot of people. And it's like, I just pictured this, I pictured, when I was reading this, I pictured these two, two guys having an argument, and then one guy being a complete asshole about it. And then Chris Cannell was walking up and like, hey, that's not cool. Why you gotta be a bully? And the guy just like, you're Chris Cornell. <laughs> Why then? He's just sitting there screaming at him. <laughs> And then meanwhile, the guy is just kind of like, the hey, and he's all like, no. Yes. This, this is the most awkward story ever. I think, I don't know, how I was bullying some guy, and he came over and told me to stop being an asshole. Oh. Uh, uh, anything else, Pugsley? Oh, and the security was called, and the guy who called the other one a queer was back to leave the lounge. And the air, rep, representatives for the airline thanked him for standing to the guy calling the other guy names for liking Obama. Okay. And ironically, he was on he was on his way to an Obama fundraiser at that time, and then that conversation happened. Irony. <laughs> Yes, that is my story I found. Okay, cool. Uh, let me do my bit here because I just wanted to connect what I talked about in the previous segment with this one, which is uh, I talked about Abraham Lincoln writing a uh, bear in a deviant art picture. Now coming out soon is Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter. Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter. Oh, I hate it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that the yeah, that looks amazing. Yes, and the international trailer came out recently, and it looks amazing. It looks awesome. And I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder. And I looked, and behold, was death saying, "Come and see." everywhere you are not the only one who has lost everything if vengeance is all you seek we will never be able to save mankind fight this war with me not for one man but for the world mr president doesn't want to see Abraham Lincoln kick some vampire ass. <laughs> oh, he got to see a oh. of Queen Victoria Demon oh. Hunter. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, my. 
Oh my god. Oh my god. I just thought of something. Okay. You you take the deep. Cross it with Twilight. I watch Abraham Lincoln wreck shop every vampire from that goddamn series. <laughs> oh, that would be awesome. That would make any sense. That'd be fantastic. That would be awesome. Uh, uh, speaking of uh, trailers, uh, another trailer for an interesting sci-fi movie just released. It's uh, it's a movie called Iron Sky, and pretty much it's all about uh, the Nazis having a moon base and they want to attack Earth. Oh yeah, yeah, I've heard about this. Kind of awesome. this. This sounds like it's going to be very, very cool. It's going to be coming out actually around my birthday. Yeah, it's... Apparently it's being released in overseas in April, but I don't know when it's going to come out in the U.S. But, it, yeah, the Nazis have a swastika moon base, which is pretty awesome. Only moments ago, New York has come under attack. Witnesses claim to have seen hundreds of UFOs. It's opening fire! Oh, And, uh, oh, God, this is going to be horrendous. Uh, guys ever heard of the uh, Candyland game? Yes. Yeah. Yes. They make a movie out of it. Yes, but guess who's going to be be starring in the Candyland movie? They're what? Oh, Vicky Candyland? Vicky Candyland. No, no, no. It gets worse. Uh, yes. I, I seem to have heard it, but I, I, I'm... I'm all right. I want to say either John or Polly Shore. No. Uh, no. I, I'll just say it. Not they, that bad. I'll just say it. They want to make a Kalen movie with Adam Sandler. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Who is uh, Who is he playing? Let me call Matthew Buck. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yes, uh, Columbia Pictures has... Adam Sandler. Happy Madison. Candyland movie starring Adam Sandler. And uh, the Hasbro Adam team's team up to bring the classic game to the big screen. I need a minute to process this. A Candyland movie starring Adam yeah. Sandler is being made. Yes. 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 Uh, <laughs> why, why are we groaning and sighing? That sounds for... awful. It does. I think it sounds awesome. <laughs> well, we'll see how it happens. Right. And the uh, last... Yes. Last bit of movie news I have is uh, a uh, Twisted Metal video game movie coming out soon. Making a movie out of that? Yep, making a movie on a Twisted Metal. And uh, the director is a co-director of the Crank series named Brian Tyler. Yeah, also Taylor. So this is his first solo directive project. Twisted Metal video game movie. And, uh... Right up his alley. Pretty much. And I... I play Twisted Metal. It's pretty freaking awesome. I think the movie would be even more awesome. 
And uh, oh, one of the chat, someone in the chat has said, "There's no plot in Twisted Metal." Yeah, well, that's what so made the Super Mario Brothers movie. Wait a minute. <laughs> Never mind. Actually, the plot <laughs> Twisted Metal is pretty much identical to the plotting gamer. Yeah. Huh? Similar <laughs> as Princess Lolly. <laughs> oh man. Uh, that is my movie news. Uh, who wants to go next? Toplessrobot.com, nerdy news, or the video game news? I like uh, will take the video game news. I'll take, I'll go ahead and take the video game news. I've got one, one short thing, and I've got a, a list, a dot com list that I managed to find that looked pretty interesting. Um, the news that I have is. Uh, Zynga's 2011 financial report is full, chock full of unexciting numbers, but it, does, but it does contain a few interesting morsels. For instance, Zynga completely owned the top five most played games on Facebook, according to the daily active user numbers, refuting a report from Facebook late last year which fussed the numbers to bizarre effect. And going down a little bit here, blah, 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 blah. And the users were... The uh, users were buying up enough of the microtransacting goods to earn Zynga 1.07 mil, not million, but billion, solely online for the entirety of 2011, with a total of 1.14 billion earned in revenue a year. But despite over earning 1 billion dollars in 2011, they ended up with a net loss for the year of 404.3 million. Wow. Yes. I'm gonna so, games so, get more scammy, yeah. scammy each year. Yeah, I and, and I don't really play those games. Although I, if I remember right, didn't we report on like like a Farmville movie or something? Yeah, I talked about that in the yep. past. Yeah, a Farmville movie coming out soon. Yes. Uh, so. the Angry Birds movie. Yep, the Angry Birds movie too, in plans. Farmville movie. Yep. Just yes. to, yeah, to sum it up, the uh, the the writers of Toy Story is writing the uh, Farmville movie. What? Yeah. Anyway. Anyways, I guess you're the last Ruben Hacker. All right, on to the random news. First off, it finally happened. They're actually making Lego Minecraft. They're what? Lego Minecraft. Lego. Oh. Yep. Lego Minecraft. No, 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 much to say there. Just Lego Minecraft. Wow. And it's, it's <laughs> doesn't um, Secondly, the Green Arrow TV show that is looking like it's probably going to happen now is also going to have Black Canary. Oh, yeah. So, I hope they do that by, one well. I, I actually place. really do. I, I really want to see them do this, you know, in a, in a good way. Show his, you know, because... You know, if they put a good budget into this and they get some good actors, I really think that they could do this one with some justice and not just, you know, show, just oh, it's just a guy with a bow and arrow. Oh, it's just, you know, this guy. I, you know, a guy with, you know, <laughs> boxing glove arrows. I, I really think that they could show him as a badass. Oh, Hopefully yeah. it doesn't reach chance to be dark in levels. <laughs> Pants to be dark in. <laughs> Indeed. Let's see here. There was something. Let's go over it. Um, oh, they are coming out with a new uh, Superman animated straight-to-DVD movie called Superman vs. the Elite. Hmm. Yeah, and finally, probably, in toy news, they're making a ton of new toys. Some of the highlights being Action figures for Gordon Freeman, a smoker, the heavy, a scout, and Claptrap from Borderlands. The, uh, what else is there? There's a lot of these things. Okay, where'd it go? Where'd it go? Where'd it go? They are making a bunch of new Transformers toys, Metal Pony toys, etc., etc., etc. Okay. Yeah, that's about it. Oh, and one last thing. Uh, MC Chris is getting his own cartoon. Awesome. Yay! Wow. All right. Now people are going to add up the animated smack and babies. 
Oh, I shit. That, that's exactly what I need. Oh, God. The song puts images in my head. I don't need to see the, 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 the physical formation of that. I do like this also. Oh, as long as it's... As long as it's set in fiction and nobody is really being hurt, I'm fine with it. Go around smacking know, real babies. I know, but the I'm listening. I know, but the entire time I see this all, I see a real baby being hit. <laughs> and then I feel like a horrible person. Oh yeah, oh, yeah uh, Mike. Also, you missed a, you missed a big piece of uh, movie news. Okay, what did I miss? That. Hold on, hold on. Let me pull it up, and I'll see you. Oh, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, let me bring this up, uh, yeah, d apparently Dan Aykroyd, uh, is not going to let, uh, Bill Murray in the Ghostbusters 3, so they're trying to cast somebody to replace Bill Murray in the Ghostbusters 3 movie. How is that not going to? So, it's not it. gonna, it's not gonna work without Bill Murray, so how do you make a Ghostbusters movie without Bill Murray? Get Bill Murray back? Yeah, unfortunately, right, they're going to have to put their guy? differences aside and, and do something. Make an animatronic Bill Murray at Disneyland. Yes. Have him just record his voice back and then we'll get him with other years. Or, or, your terms. or you can cast Seth Ro Rogen. <laughs> no. no. It's not Bill Murray. I know, that's so inside in the, in the chat. <laughs> but, uh... Okay, uh, yes, now we get to the most interesting part of the podcast. It's known as the weird news. The weirdest oh, of boy. weird news. And <laughs> it's not, there's no food related, sort of, in this edition, but let's talk about something Jewish. Oh, boy. And you're going to love this. <laughs> We're, you, you guys are going to love That's this. Funny. You're going to love this. All right. I get a feeling that Justin and I are the only ones going to get what, what the hell you're talking about. I'll, I'll mention it and see if, if you recognize it. Uh, the title says, Muzzle Toth. Nikki the Pomeranian celebrates his bark mitzvah. Oh! Ow. The oh, Ow. Ow! I know about fun. Oh! It hurts. Hurt. Oh, painful. Oh, my God. Uh, that fun. Call on the lens. Yeah, dogs this, uh, celebrating oh, oh, oh. bark. I, I'm buzz. texting that to Iron Liz right now. <sighs> Leave your religion out of the pets. <laughs> uh, <sighs> yes, it's a trend now. Dogs celebrating their into adulthood with bark mitzvah. They're uh, not adults. They're dogs. I mean. Apparently this... They get bar mitzvahs too now. They actually got circumcised the dogs. Well, this Nikki, the Pomeradian, uh, he turned two years old, or 13 in dog years, and he prepares for the traditional Jewish celebration of becoming a man. And, of course, we're talking about bark mitzvah. That's actually 14. Could you imagine if dog years didn't really exist, meaning this was probably really, really pointless? In this coming-of-age ritual, which has recently become a craze among dog owners, Nikki dons a yarmulke and a tuxedo, and even receives a blessing. Wait, how can the dog read from the Torah? Dog is a penguin. Exactly, Katie. I don't think he... I don't think there is. Their owner's going to, I guess? I don't know. The whole point of the service. But, uh, you'll find out because... You'll find out that? because I, as I'm going to do this, I'm going to insert a news video about it right now. Nikki, this is a very joyous occasion for you. And Rabbi Otis, who is 100 years old, two centuries, oh my God. all right, he's going to help mm -hmm. me oversee the Bar Mitzvah with you. It was muzzle tub all around for a special dog called Nikki. The Pomeranian pooch celebrate today Bark Mitzvah for turning two or 13 in dog years. The event is one of the latest crazes in dog lover circles, a booming multi-million dollar industry. I perform bark mitzvahs because it's a blessing for the animals. And I really believe that the animals have a right to have a party and a religion. 
But with all the wacky chutzpah involved in a bark mitzvah, it's hard not to ask, is there a line being crossed? This is something that uh, young Jewish uh, adults uh, prepare for for years, and it's really a part of a sacred tradition. Um, it, to imagine that a dog could do anything like this is degrading. Nikki's sister Sophia is four now. The pup's owner says if she keeps her studies up, they plan on continuing the new tradition. Janet Weinstein, The Associated Press. <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh, let's move on to the next one. Uh, who wears jeans? Who doesn't wear jeans? I'm wearing them right now. You want to pay for it? I have to wear jeans most of the time. Well, how can a dog believe in jeans? Uh, good question, Aaron. Uh, a Canadian company invents scratch and sniff jeans for men. Oh, dear God. Oh, dear God. Oh, oh God. Like that. That's it's... not, no. What? That's the place is it's in a bond. Canadian company uh, invents scratch and sniff jeans for men. That's, uh, that's uh, the uh, uh, worst uh, idea ever. All over it. For the, for the guy who just has to smell his hand after scratching his ass. Yes. And they're going... Alright, here's the thing. It's going to cost 150 bucks for the for a oh, come on. pair of jeans. And That's and and if you scratch it, it'll smell like raspberries. Oh dear God! How sad is it that the <laughs> have one flavor? <laughs> raspberries. Right, because I want my crotch to smell like raspberries. Yeah, that's what he wants. Yeah. All right, the last. A weird news article that I have here is, uh, first off, let me ask the two ladies in the podcast here, uh, what did you, wait, are any of you turned 16 already? I'm 18. Yep. All I'm right. 18. All right, so what did you get for your sweet 16? A, um, a trip to Boston? Actually, I don't remember, I don't remember what I got for my sweet 16. <laughs> Tickets to a Red Sox game? I got to go see that's her and the Half-Blood Prince. That's what I got. I, exactly. got, I remember disgusting. I got to see Harry Potter and Half-Blood Prince. Okay, okay, okay. That's reasonable. But, I got to uh, see the Red Sox. That's, that's, uh -huh. that's pretty cool, actually. But uh, this sweet 16 lady chick, girl... Oh my God, something expensive, fancy, and awesome. Uh she all right. Or you you expect a a, a a girl expecting to get a car for their sweet sixteen, right? Mm -hmm. This car if is she's rich. This car is special. You know. You want to know why the car? Oh, Jesus. You want to know why the car is special? Why? why? Because she was born in the exact same car. Oh, dear God. Ew! She gets the car Ew. that she was born in for her sweet 16. Ew. That's just disgusting. Ew. Uh, okay, no, I think that's actually pretty cool. I, uh, I was thinking it was going to be like she's get a Lamborghini or something. Oh, yeah, it's some stupid, you know, like, <laughs> rich kid who's going to really not appreciate it. Oh, that's actually pretty <laughs> damn cool. It is. I, I mean, it's weird, but I think it's you pretty awesome. Yay, I get a car. Oh, you... What? I mean, it's a 1989 the, the Toyota. I have is, did they clean the stains out? I think they did, but it's a, it's a 1989 Toyota Corolla LE, and it's a, a nice red one. Sweet, uh, that's actually a pretty good car. And, uh, I think, I don't know, like all. They nickname it the I, Birthmobile, the Placenta, and or the Red Monster. No, stop. No. They called it the <laughs> Red Placenta. My car's name is... Uh, oh my best. Uh, yeah. yeah. My car's a little bit Toyota Camry. Pretty darn close. Pretty darn close. Huh? 
Corolla, Camry, yeah. same thing. And uh, yeah. I, also, I also have a uh, news video. She's searching for pictures from when her daughter Joanna Kearns was born 16 years ago. Sorry, honey, but we did not have time to prepare. Like we didn't have a camera. We didn't have anything. Nancy Kearns woke up in labor around 11 o'clock at night. I went downstairs, woke my husband. He had fallen asleep on the couch and said, hey, we're having a baby today. Get up. Their transportation? A 1989 Toyota Corolla Limited Edition. Oh, yeah. It was very nice in its day. It had electric windows and doors. I was very excited. It was a step up from the car I had been driving. Now it's got 188,000 miles, some character, and a new driver. I like this car. I, it's so easy to drive, and it's just, I love it. It's like my baby, even though it's, I'm its baby in a way. In a way only mother and daughter can explain. We started down Hamilton Avenue. Y'all call it the birthmobile. I'm looking at the clock in the car. Contractions are like every 30 seconds. Mom will call it the placenta. They are total pushing contractions. Which is pretty gross. Can't sit, can't stand, squatting in the car. <laughs> at that point, he pulled over in the front yard. One more contraction, she came out through my shorts on the floor. <laughs> the daughter who didn't wait for a car to get her to the hospital. Now, can't wait to get the car to go to the mall. Not shocking. To eat. Joanna, happy sweet 16th. Oh my god. Oh my god. No. Why? I'm I'm just, imagine. just imagining this, oh this, this baby coming out of this woman. Oh, and, and oh my god. Very it's like, she, it's like she, oh, they can, how fast are we going? I don't care. <laughs> oh, five miles an hour. <laughs> Thank god the woman didn't need a C-section. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank God. <laughs> yes. That's the best first although, although somebody was somebody was mentioning the uh, the the uh, imagery that was kind of you know describing how the how the girl was born or everything. I could I could just say uh, they could be worse and say well the child just shot from their basket you know I I, could, I could come up with several different things that could make it a lot worse. At least but I don't part guess we don't have that time. <laughs> So yeah, that's, but let me take, let's take the placenta and travel on to the top 10 of the podcast. Uh, oh. Shut up. Yay, I, yeah. I had to segue into something. Shut up. Uh, Terrible. Shut up. Uh, the top 10 for yeah. this podcast, it's called 10 Words People Need to Stop Using in 2012. Oh. Uh. Oh, for this. <laughs> it's gonna, this should be fun. It's going to be fun. All right, so it's started off with number 10. Number 10, it's DEETS. D-E-E-T-S. DEETS, as in short for details. Deets. Let's, just, use... let's just be honest. <laughs> abbreviating words are fun, but sometimes the abbreviation doesn't work. We're, we were okay with this abbreviation version of the word details early on. But for some reason, saying deets just never felt right and failed to catch yeah. on. It seemed like a good idea at the time, but for whatever reason, it just wasn't meant to be. It so, sounds like something yeah. I would have said in high school. Give me the deets. But, just give me the deets yeah. already. I, ne I never liked that word. I saw it in all those, those stupid TV magazines about all the celebrities and shit. I never heard that word until now. Oh, well, that's good. Don't use it. <laughs> I never will. Okay. If if anybody ever hears me using this word in a non-ironic manner or a an, or a manner that is not making fun of it, please come and just hit me over the head with something. Okay. Okay. That's what I'm doing anyway. Okay. You have to please come to hit me or something. I was going to do it anyway. Okay, number nine. Woot. W O O T. Use that like in We're not sure where the hell this popular Facebook term that people use in a place of hooray came from, but we hate it. If you're given, if you're going to write a word, you, you should should also be comfortable use saying it. We have yet to hear anyone say woot in a conversation that wasn't a challenge. 
And where is this from? This list? Where is this from again? Yeah. Uh, this list is on... Hold on. Let me provide a linkatory in the chat in here really quick. That's at guyspeed.com. Guyspeed.com. Okay. Okay. Apparently, they did not do the research. Woot does not come... It did not originate from Facebook. It's been around longer since before Facebook was even thought of, for one thing. For another thing, people can and do say Woot, as he obviously demonstrated. Yeah. Research, Hello, motherfucker. Henry. Do it! Wow. <laughs> yeah. No idea what you said. It, what did you just say? Uh, You're cutting research, me out really bad. They need to do it. Can you hear me now? Yes. yes. Hello. Okay. Yes. I don't know what was wrong, but I hope my microphone's not about to go. Uh, but yes, they need to research, God damn it. Woot has been lo around longer. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Leonhardt in the chat says it right. It's from Facebook. It's a PC gaming term. Yes. It's been well, around for years. Apparently the guys who created this at guyspeed.com did not do the research. Damn. Yes. All right, so let's just move on to number eight. Frenemies. 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 The combination of friend and enemy. That's a word that people use on a daily basis. <laughs> As a guy, it's a good rule of thumb not to use any word that was popularized by cops. Uh, gossip girl, sorry. Another helpful tip is to avoid anything uh, ever utterly on iCarly. This combination of friend and enemy is unfortunately a guilt of both of this atrocious offenses and should be dealt with accordingly. What's not? I think it makes perfect sense. It's someone who's your friend and someone who's your enemy at the same time. Yeah. It makes so perfect sense. It just, I, uh, Don't ever use frenemies again in 2012. I never used it in the first place, so that, that's good. Although, although if these guys have any more uh, did not do the research moments, I just might use that just to annoy them. <laughs> All right, uh, number seven. Let's see. This ought to be interesting. Number seven, epic. Oh come on, epic! epic. I haven't heard epic in a long time. Words. Yep, epic is a word that. You People need to stop saying in 2012. Sean's going to be pissed. <laughs> Besides happy hey, Vikings. Sean being pissed. What? <laughs> Things were going so well for this word until everyone started using it for everyday occurrences that are decidedly not epic. Example, this coffee is epic. It No, it's not. It's coffee. Sure, the It was epic coffee. They didn't have the coffee that the person decided that was epic. You just had ordinary horror. Sure, sure, the mocha's delish, but oh man, did, person, did we just say the been word no delish? Yeah, <laughs> I, I kind of hate this list a lot. Ah, uh, uh, you'll be saying your opinions right. afterwards. <laughs> uh, let's see, number six, a dorkable. Oh come on! No, a mashup, no. a, a mashup no. of adorable and dorky. Ah. Uh, for some... It is the, it is the definition <laughs> of everybody on thatguyswithglasses.com. Yes, yes it is. And just everybody is everywhere so is TV so trope. Cool. I could not agree with the TV trope. For some reason... For some reason, Fox hit or miss comedy New Girl brought about world spread use of this mashup of Adorable and Dorky. No, she didn't. We love looking at Zoe de Chanel as much as the next guy, but she doesn't need her own annoying word to describe her appeal. We already had her a word for her. Unattainable. They're wrong. Now, number five makes so much sense. I'm so happy people are stopping winning. Because really, I just have to punch people in the face from hearing that word so goddamn much. Oh my god. Uh, that was oh a challenge. God. Yes, number that five just, just is stop. winning. It needed to stop. It really uh, did. Uh, it was so my, stupid my and so sad. pointless. And the Why did? Okay, I, I guess I spoiled it for you guys by showing the list. Oh god damn it! <laughs> uh, yeah, five. We're is, already on number five. 
If five is winning, sheesh. The stupid phrase. There was nothing was. wrong with winning until Charlie Sheen adapted as the slogan for his 2011 media circus career suicide tour. Charlie ruined his career and a handful of words like troll and warlock. Now not only are those who use the word not winning, but you can assume they're quick, quietly douchey as well. First Game. of all, douchey does not have a, have a This is what Secondly, Charlie Sheen was at the time. A drug addict who was losing his acting career and just spiraling downwards, and everyone felt the need to quote him and worship him and think he was awesome. Like, really, that's what you want? You want to be a drug addict losing your, losing your career and just your life spiraling out of hand with cameras trying to private your private life, like, every, everywhere you was, go? No, he wasn't awesome. No, you don't. He was, he was he's awesome. hysterical. He was pathetic. He was funny, but his career, him at the time, he was just being pathetic and obnoxious, and no one seemed to care. Everyone's like, oh, Charlie Sheen is amazing. We have to quote everything he said every five minutes. I'm like, no. No. You need to shut up is what you need to do. <laughs> and you I'm know what? Looking at the picture now. on this thing, he's making my fedora look bad. He needs to stop it. Make my hat look bad. Yes. All right. Moving on to number four, and the word is Kardashian. <laughs> I've never heard her just last name used as a term in my entire life, and I don't uh, plan on it. It's not. So, so they're going from they went Wait. from from words that should not be banned, not doing the research, uh, of wanting to ban you know the term winning a word that doesn't you know, even exist, and now they want to ban an entire surname. Well, let yep. me. Oh, it gets worse. Wait. Yeah, I know it gets worse, but don't spoil it yet. Uh, for all right, if you want an example of how the term is used, here's the example they used. I noticed you signed the grandma's. All right, I'm sorry. I noticed you signed the grandma's card, but didn't chip in for the gift. How Kardashian of you! I never know heard what that they're like in their personal life lives. Moving on. All right, moving on. Number three. All right, all right. I don't know how they group Any this. Any word created Any by the cast of Jersey Shore. Because it's pathetic. Right, the entire English fucking language. <laughs> Because technically, you speak a word you create it out of your mouth. Such, oh, like such as uh, meatball, GTL. Uh, she's too young for you, bro. Um, hey, there's Wait, a problem with those. There are actual oh, oh, existing meatballs? words. Meatballs is a food. She's too young for yes. you means she's too damn young for you. Back the hell off! You're getting yourself into something stupid. And I have no idea what the hell GTL means because I don't do acronyms because they make my head hurt. Jim Tan what? Laundry. Jim Tan Laundry. Oh. <laughs> oh God. Hey. More humanity. All right. Uh, yeah. All right. Here comes number two, and you might be a little pissed off at this one. Yeah, this never happened. I don't know what they're talking about. This has never happened in my entire life. All right. Like I don't. Two. Adele. Oh come Fuck on! That's that. bullshit. Adele. She's a person. All right, all right. Let me read. All right, let me read. Great singer, if she isn't the drop dead gorgeous too. All right, let me read what they say here. All year, your girlfriend and your mother have been asking about this Adele thing, and you still find yourself asking, "What the turn is an Adele?" She's a British singer and songwriter that has somehow captured the imagination of the entire gender. You may be tired of hearing about her, but if you ever need to distract your lady, just play Adele's album 21 and leave the room. You want to go... Yeah, we're that mindless. <laughs> you want to go to the mall? Well, I would, but hey, isn't that rolling in the deep, I hear? You ever oh. think that maybe it's just a good, good album, jackasses? Yeah. I like that song. And it's a good singer? Who fucking yeah. wrote this it was album? A great song. I mean, th this album. Who wrote this 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 list so we can send them long messages about how stupid they are and they need help to research thing. And they also need to hang out with some women because we're not mindless robots going to be distracted by something you throw at us. All right, let me. Uh, well, actually, I could look this. Let's see. Uh, by Tree Riddle. What the fuck? Tree Riddle. What the hell? Who the hell? All right, well, Tree Riddle. Because Tree he doesn't want to use his real name because he knows he would get like tons and tons of hate mail over this. <laughs> oh really we'll so find it. oh boy. Okay. We will find a way to <sighs> Number one. Occupy. Oh fuck you. 
Well, see, yeah. same thing with Occupy. That was started for a legitimate reason, and it kind of spread all over the world, because you want to know why? People liked the message that was going on, so everyone decided to organize and say, hey, let's go do this. Let's protest this, because, you know, we, we, need to, we need to do something. And then people decided, on the other hand, let's parody this, because it could, be, it could make great fuel for our comedy skits and whatnot. So I don't know where they're coming from with this. Honestly, I don't. Like, nobody says, let's occupy this, occupy that, for no fucking reason at all. <laughs> because, like, you don't do that. Because I've heard stories of people being, like, arrested and, like, horrible things happening to them because they just randomly said, let's occupy whatever. Or they were doing something, and they happened to mention the word in passing, like, oh, hey, did you hear about those occupy whatevers? And then they would be in trouble because they mentioned it in passing. So I don't know where they're getting this from, honestly. I don't. Uh, uh, what? Yeah, I think the... we all agree that this list is absolutely awful. Yeah, Especially and apparently other people, people agree well. with us as well. Because I, I got to look at some of the comments. Oh, uh, so like, like there's one, and this, keep in mind, this is a minister at United Church of Christ saying this. He says, I will never reclaim the 25 seconds I wasted in scanning this puerile article. Oh, yeah. I'm reading it right now, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, whoa. I, I, I looked at it, I was like, I might as well talk about it on the podcast. You know, it's really bad. Uh, anyways, uh, which words do you want to be retired in 2012? How about we just retire this guy from writing and being a journalist on this website? Because he doesn't do a good job at anything. That's a moron. Oh, I guess yeah, some people... Tree Riddle. Yeah, Tree Riddle, you, you are fired. <laughs> yes, he is fired. You fired are fired from fired breathing. From <laughs> uh, and it's, and it's only his... And it's apparently his only article on the what? site, too, by the way. That oh yeah, this is, <laughs> yeah, this is his first article. My God! But we have a picture of his face, so that is apt. That is good. Bio coming soon. Yeah, yeah just... it must be a new writer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that was the very exciting top ten list of the podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And if you ever see Free Riddle, give him a give him a. Flap upside the head in the and face. say that was an epic flap you just got. That's just a stupid article. You should never write it ever again because you suck. At, at, at least, at least not professionally. Don't ever write again. Yes, you can keep your little articles in, within your circle of friends and family, and whatnot. But the internet doesn't want to see your shit because you suck at life. Uh, all right. Yeah. And, okay, what did we learn? What did we learn today on the podcast? We learned, we learned that Riddle is not a moron. And we learned that dog romances are stupid. <laughs> Bark, Mispa. <laughs> yes. Oh man. Bark. Pretty pointless. Because dogs can't read. <laughs> I'm so speechless right now because that list and everything else I talked about just blew my mind. <sighs> yeah. Oh I, my god. I suppose it's time to end the podcast. I'm. Oh, man. Yes, it's getting time to close yes. it out, and <sighs> I didn't want to do this, but I guess we'll do it. I'm your host, Scooter Mike, and along with me were my co-host, Gomer. Yo! You guys have fun, take care, have lots of sex, and do lots of drugs. Wait, don't do the drugs. <laughs> don't, don't do that. That's bad. Pugsley. If you are doing it, do it in secrecy. Okay. I is Pugsley, and that's pretty much all I have to say, other than fuck that dude who wrote that fucking article. Because he's a dumbass. <laughs> Uh, Rosen Hacker. See you guys later. And our two awesome guests of awesome, Kitty Marie and Juari, also known as J Dub. Hello. And goodbye. Uh, thanks a lot. <laughs> Thank you. This has been Attack of the Awesome After Dark, and you've been attacked by the awesome. <laughs>